Max Holloway, this new era is mine. Holloway dismisses Ilya Tapuria's claims of a new era, asserting his dominance and experience as the former champion. Since I've been with the UFC since I was 20 years old, everybody think I'm like 50. So it's crazy, you know? At the end of the day, people keep saying that uh, this new era is about to start and this and that and blah, blah, blah. Ilya Tapuria is like 29, I think, I, I believe. I'm only 32, I turned 33 at the end of the year. I'm like, this new era, I'm stood in his era. I am stood here. Just because I've been around longer than him doesn't mean uh, I'm an old guy, so. Last time I checked, I was younger than Ilya and I had title defenses, so. Max Holloway, Ilya Tapuria, doesn't get the gist of it. Holloway blasts Tapuria's point-down offer, calling it foolish and questioning his boxing IQ. The former champion insists on fighting with strategy and skill, not recklessness. He stated, I don't think Ilya gets the gist of it. The point-down is something you do towards the end of a fight. If something's going good, if the fight is entertaining, or if you're winning, you give the other guy a shot. The moment is a moment for a reason. The belt is called the baddest mother If the belt was the DMF, dumbest mother then maybe I would have got sucked into it. Talks about being a boxer. That's not very much boxer IQ-ish of him. Max Holloway warns fighters against point-down misuse. Holloway clarifies his signature point-down move, emphasizing the need to stay aggressive and swing after delivering it, not retreat. He stated, just remember when you guys do the point down, it's stay there and swing, not point down and take a couple steps back. Francis Ngannou opens up about his mental struggles. Ngannou reveals the devastating impact of his loss on his mental health, admitting that he questioned his toughness and faced immense grief. You know, um, I used to I mean, the, they've been telling me that I'm tough to the point that I get to believe that I'm tough. And then I recently just find out that I wasn't tough. I wasn't that tough, you know? Like, life can let you take an advance and think you are, you are running away, and then it hits you really bad, like, from the front. And then, uh, you know, it's something that I never uh, imagine. I mean, I never know how I feel. I have seen people going through it, and then I even, out of compassion, I have been trying to to understand like how he, he must feel, but never get anywhere close to how he feel exactly. Obviously, this is something you've had to think about, deal with your entire training camp. How bad or hard was it today to focus on the fight itself? It was pretty hard, you know. Um, he was hard at any moment from the beginning to the end, but I think it's one of those things that uh, you kind of like ask yourself, is this going to ever uh, be over? And uh, you think he, he might never be over. You just might as well learn how to, um, to roll with it, to live with it, because in certain cases, I would have taken time, you know, to, uh, to grieve. But how long would that take? I don't think there is enough time uh, for me to do that. I don't think a lifetime would be enough uh, to grieve. And uh, so is it just about like keep going, you know? It's, it's a new life that I'm, new way of living that I have to learn. Francis Ngannou, I'm still learning to deal with this. Nganu humbly acknowledges that he's still grappling with the challenges of his loss and is unsure if he can offer advice to others in similar situations. You're in this horrible position where you can give people advice about this. If someone is in the same situation as you, is that the advice you would give just one day at a time, just step by step and try and make it through? I don't think I can give somebody advice because I'm still expecting to have advice on myself how to deal with this kind of situation. But uh, yes, the, the only thing that I know right now is that is I've been taking it one day at a time. Kamaru Usman, thrilled by Francis Ngannou's knockout. Usman expresses excitement and admiration for Ngannou's dominant victory, highlighting the power and skill that made it possible. Ah! Took one too many. He took one too many. <sighs> Ian Gary calls out Kamaru Usman for dodging a fight. Gary accuses Usman of avoiding a fight at UFC Tampa, comparing him to Colby Covington and demanding a match. Usman tweeted, I'm ready to slide. Gary responded, Ready? Really? I thought you were built different, but turns out you and Colby are more similar than I thought. Say yes. See you December 14th. 
McGregor to support Paul Hughes against Usman. McGregor's potential presence at Hughes's fight against Usman adds a layer of intrigue, especially considering the rivalry between McGregor and Usman's cousin, Habib. McGregor tweeted, Paul, my man, I will go to the arena and support 100% for sure. And if it kicks off, I'll be in there before you could even say, the Nurgamadovs are juice head inbred rats married to their cousins. Your team and corner have done a tremendous job with you. They will take you all the way. You've got this. We are with you, brother. Bring home the gold. Sean Strickland confirms rematch with Drikus Duplessis. Strickland has agreed to a rematch with Duplessis, although the location and date have yet to be determined. The highly anticipated rematch promises fireworks. He tweeted, it's happening, location and date not confirmed. Tom Aspinall predicts Ilya Tapuria will knock out Max Holloway. Aspinall offers his take on the Tapuria versus Holloway matchup, predicting that Tapuria's striking power will be too much for Holloway to handle. So being a bit of a shorter guy, what he does really well, Ilya Tapuria, is shorter arms. So with this fight, he's going to be looking to get inside. And the body hooks, the low kicks, and the shot in is what he's looking for. Because he's got like a low center of gravity, especially, he says that Max Holloway is 5'11". Mate. He's at least 6'1". So with Ilya Tapuria being the shorter guy, he'll be looking for the right hands over the top the left hook to the body, and the shot and trying to hold him down. His defensive boxing as well is incredible. Look, he'll throw shots. He's got the old Philly shell going there. He's got it? the Philly shell going, but his chin, and this is something that I need to work on myself, he's constantly tucked. So he'll throw his shots, and he'll come out of there, and like you say, he'll be behind the shoulder with his chin tucked, and then he'll go back in, look. See how he just oh, comes straight okay. back in? It's... So Max Holloway, complete contrasting style. The only the only similar thing is they both like to box. Max Holloway's style is... He'll, he'll have his hands quite low and his chin quite high, as we talk about with the taller guys. And the guy will come, three, four punch combinations, step off, back in, step off, back in. And because of the height advantage in this, he's most likely going to be going this way. As he's stepping off, because Ilya Tapur is much shorter than him, a lot of the punches I would imagine will be missing. But this is where, this is the important thing when you talk about the balance and the footwork. Can Ilya Tapur get his feet in, in time with, with such a tall guy like this? He's, the volume of punches that he throws on the fight is unbelievable. But the guy's got ridiculous conditioning. Do you anticipate with the grappling of Tapur that he is going to revert to it at some point in the fight? I think he's going to keep him guessing with the, with the takedowns, yeah. And okay. I think... It's hard to take him down though, isn't it? It is. It really, but, but the threat's there. And sometimes that can bring you def your defensive boxing. That can affect your defensive boxing a little bit because you're thinking about the takedowns, the hands are low. You're getting ready for a shot all the time and punches are coming over the top. I think I'm going to go out there and say Ilya Tapuri can put him down. He's got the power to and he mixes it up so well between the disciplines. I wouldn't be surprised if Max Holloway got dropped in this fight. Tom Aspinall reveals UFC's heavyweight title roadmap. Aspinall confirms that he and the UFC have planned out the heavyweight title picture promising an exciting year for the division. He stated, it's looking great. We got a plan now. Me and the UFC have spoken at length and we've come to a 2025 roadmap of what's going to happen with the heavyweight title. And it's going to be exciting. Habib explains why he'll never be friends with John Jones. Habib reveals that his loyalty to his friend Cormier prevents him from befriending Jones, despite acknowledging Jones's fighting prowess. He stated, I never had any disagreements with Jones. As a fighter, he is great, and it will be hard to match him, but my friend Cormier is in conflict with him, so Jones can't be my friend. I don't befriend those who aren't friends with my friends. Ilya Topuria, I would make Islam Mahachev suffer. Topuria confidently asserts that he would dominate Mahachev in a fight, exploiting his weaknesses and making him pay for his mistakes. Para Islam yo represento un estilo que él sabe que lo vencería. Él sabe porque yo conozco muy bien de dónde él viene. Cuando era pequeño y participaba en los en los campeonatos de la lucha grecorromana, he compartido muchos campeonatos con muchos dagestanis. Sé cómo funciona su proceso de pensamiento, sé su nivel de técnica, su nivel de fuerza, sé qué es lo que les molesta, qué es lo que no les molesta. Los conozco muy bien. Entonces, para mí, yo te lo digo, aunque parezca una pelea muy difícil, lo haría sufrir muchísimo, muchísimo a Islam, demasiado. Soy un tipo que tiene una preparación física impecable, que en todo, en, en el quinto asalto estoy igual que en, el, que en el primero y represento una amenaza en cualquier segundo del combate. Un, un estilo al que nunca jamás en la vida Islam se ha enfrentado ni jamás se va a enfrentar, a no ser que se enfrente a mí. Entonces yo por eso digo que es que ahora mismo no hay nadie que me pueda hacer sombra. 
Ilya Tapuria questions Alexander Volkanovsky's prediction. Tapuria dismisses Volkanovsky's prediction that Holloway will beat him, suggesting that Volkanovsky is simply trying to set up a rematch with Holloway. Hay otro nombre esperando en la fila que ya lo conoces muy bien, que es Alexander Volkanovsky. ¿Crees que le van a poner el siguiente en tu fila? No lo sé, la verdad, ese tipo a veces me sorprende porque es, es muy raro. Es como que lo, lo, he visto las últimas declaraciones que ha estado haciendo eh, sobre mi combate con Max Holloway, que cree que Max Holloway me va a ganar. Yo más que creer que él cree eso, es lo que él quiere, porque es mucho más fácil eh, hacer una revancha con un tipo al que le has ganado tres veces que con uno que te ha noqueado en siete minutos, obviamente, porque es de un poco de sinvergüenza, ¿no? Es como, tío, si te dominé, si te noqueé, ¿cómo vas a decir de un tío al que le ganaste tres veces que crees que me va a ganar? Es como que no lo entiendo mucho, ¿sabes? Eh, si él va a ser el siguiente que se va a enfrentar a mí, no lo sé, la verdad. Depende cómo se evolucionen las cosas dentro dentro de la división, tal vez es Diego López, tal vez el combate siguiente es el contra Diego López, quién sabe. Umar vs. Song Yadong headlines the UFC Tampa main event. In a blockbuster matchup that's sure to ignite the MMA world, Umar will face Song Yadong in the headlining fight of UFC Tampa. This clash of rising stars promises fireworks. Alex Pereira fires back at Magomed Ankalaev's trash talk. Alex Pereira isn't buying Magomed Ankalaev's trash talk. The reigning light heavyweight champion responded to Ankalaev's dismissive comments by implying that he might make it even harder for the light heavyweight contender to get a title shot. Man, I don't have nobody in my mind. The organization came with Khalil last time and was a surprise for me too. I don't really choose opponents. Some people say Ankalaev, but I'm gonna be honest with you, him and his manager been talking a lot of crap, saying that Alex, oh, Alex, is not, I don't want to fight this and that, but the reality is the organization don't want him to fight because he's boring. People don't like to watch him fight, right? He's not the guy that sells pay-per-view. So, honestly, like, that's disrespectful. They even they try to put the ball on me, like I'm saying, like, if I'm Alex, right, if I'm putting the ball on me, because it's not up to me, it's up to the organization. The organization don't want to make the fight. But now because they keep saying that, keep disrespecting, maybe I'll make it a little bit, bit even harder for them to fight me. Alex Pereira. If Khalil's performance was shit, where does Jamal Hill rank mine? Alex Pereira isn't impressed with Jamal Hill's criticism of his performance against Khalil Roundtree. The light heavyweight champion fired back claiming that he's on a completely different level than the light heavyweight contender. I'm going to be real honest with you, Ariel. If that performance with Kali was shit, where does Jamal rank the performance from Alex against him then? So, you know what I mean? If that fight was crap, so imagine the fight, that, you know what I mean? How can he say that? But I'm going to be honest, I'm not going to further talk about Jamal. I have a lot of respect for your show. But Alex, is not, Alex say he's at a different level. Fair enough. Could Alex Pereira targets return before June, but could fight sooner. Alex Pereira has his sights set on a return to the octagon. While he's ideally aiming for that time frame, the light heavyweight champion revealed that he could potentially fight as early as March. And if it were up to him, he'd be stepping back into the cage this December. Ideally, he will fight around, like you say, June, it will be ideal, but he maybe like to fight around March even. But honestly, say if it was up to him, he'll fight in December right now. It's because, but the problem is, before uh, these two fights happened too soon, and we had a lot of other appearances, a lot of trips, a lot of business to do, and we had to push them for after these two fights, because they were scheduled for before. The guys who organized, they understood, but like we gotta, he has some obligations to do, so he feels that around March is a good date. Tom Aspinall confident in his chances against Francis Ngannou. Tom Aspinall isn't backing down from a potential matchup with Francis Ngannou. The heavyweight star believes that a fight between the two would be a close affair, but he's confident in his technical skills to give him the edge. Aspinall versus Francis, who wins? Oh, that's a good fight. That's a good, that's a great fight. Always been a big fan of Francis. Love his story, love what he's all about. Um, I think it's a 50-50 fight, to be honest. Francis is a scary man, but I think technically I would take the edge, but I think that's a great fight. Tom Aspinall teases big news coming soon. 
Tom Aspinall has some exciting news brewing. The heavyweight prospect recently spoke with the UFC and revealed that there are plans in place for his future. While he couldn't share specifics, he hinted that big announcements are on the horizon. Yeah, I'm just training to be the backup fighter right now. I'm getting myself fit. Do I think it's going to happen? Probably not, but I'll be ready for it if it does. We just spoke to the UFC. We've got some plans in place. Can't reveal them right now because it's top secret, but there is big news coming soon. Bilal Muhammad calls out Shafkat Rachmanov for a fight. Bilal Muhammad is hungry for a fight with Shafkat Rachmanov. The welterweight champion has made it clear that he's targeting the undefeated star and he's not afraid to call him out for a showdown. He stated, I asked for this fight. I'm the hunter. I'm starving. My fridge is empty. I need some Shafkat meat. No ditty. Bilal Muhammad wants to stay active and fight frequently. Bilal Muhammad is looking to stay busy and fight as often as possible. Inspired by Alex Pereira's frequent schedule, the welterweight champion aims to maintain a high level of activity. I feel people, I love to fight. If I'm, It's so hard to stay healthy in this game that if, if I'm healthy, I want to be in the cage. And people are like, oh, we thought you were going to wait a year to, to defend and you're going to push it longer because it took you this long to get it. And it's like sitting on the couch doesn't get you paid. Sitting on the couch doesn't, you know, make me happy. I, I want to get happy by competing. I love to compete. And it's like such a small window in this game where you don't know what tomorrow is going to hold that I'd rather stay busy. And I, the, the hardest thing for me was that way. I wanted to get into the cage. I wanted to fight. Um, so, yeah, I think that for for myself, it's obviously the task at hand. What's next? And, and then for 2025, I'm trying to get on that Alex Pereira uh, schedule, right? If, if it wasn't for him, I'd probably be on that fighter of the year uh, ballot uh, for, for the guys that I'd be in and the, the, the route that I'm taking. But, uh, you know, he still exists. But yeah, you know, next year for myself, it's just like staying busy, I think. Bilal Muhammad compares Shafkat Rachmanov to Sean Brady. Bilal Muhammad sees a parallel between Shafkat Rachmanov and Sean Brady. Brady was seen as the undefeated juggernaut before his fight against Muhammad and he believes that Rachmanov is now the scariest man in the world. He stated, I felt that storyline before the fight Sean Brady. The undefeated juggernaut, Brady, was the strongest man in the world. Now Shafkat is the scariest man in the world. I've already gone through it. Ilya Tapuria claims ground game is better than striking. Ilya Tapuria is confident in his grappling skills. The featherweight champion believes that he can take any opponent to the ground and submit them at will. Imagine if in the fight he starts to run around inside the octagon and he didn't stop to exchange punches with me and, and really fight. I can take the decision to take him down whenever I want. As soon as I take that, that decision, I will submit him. As soon as he touches the ground, he will be submitted. Do you feel like he has good submission defense? Look, at the same time, it's like I don't want to take all the credits from Max Holloway because he demonstrated that he's a he's a very good fighter with with a lot of experience in, in, in his back. But at the same time, it's like he never faced someone like me. Never, ever. The moment when I'm going to take him down, if that happens, if I don't knock him out before, I don't think he's going to be able to, to stop my, my submissions. Trust me, I'm very, very good in the ground. Even yeah. I think I'm better in the ground than in, in, the, in the striking. The thing is that people never ne never saw my, my ground game because I didn't need it in my UFC career. Ilya Tapuria targets lightweight division and calls out Bilal Muhammad. Ilya Tapuria has his sights set on the lightweight division and also believes that Bilal Muhammad would be an easy matchup for him. The featherweight champion sees himself moving up in weight and taking on the welterweight champion. So maybe the, after this one, it could be to move up to, to the lightweight division. And if we still have that big champion in the welterweight division, Bella, that's an easy one for me. And what else? It's Max Holloway, the lightweight title on the welterweight title. That, like that, will be, that will be great. Uh, any response to Bilal saying that he'd uh, slap you around if you met him in person? Uh -huh. Um, he, he wants to go to, to the decision with, with me also. Alexander Rakic looks sharp in training ahead of Magomed Ankalaev fight. Alexander Rakic is looking in peak physical condition as he prepares for his upcoming fight against Magomed Ankalaev. New training footage shows the light heavyweight contender in excellent form.
Alex Pereira responds to Jake Paul's call out. Alex Pereira isn't interested in a fight with Jake Paul. The light heavyweight champion pointed out that he's under contract with the UFC and can't leave to pursue a boxing match. Well, I'm going to be honest, it's of course something that interests me, but he knows that I'm on a contract to the UFC and I cannot just leave. I think that's why he calls and he, he says all that. Because uh, I think if the UFC was a league that allows everybody to fight anywhere, I don't think he'll be saying that. Kai Kara France surprised by Kai Asakura getting title shot in UFC debut. Kai Kara France was taken aback by Kai Asakura being offered a title shot in his UFC debut. The flyweight contender questioned the decision, suggesting that it's unusual for a fighter with no UFC experience to get such a big opportunity. What were your thoughts when that fight was announced? My thoughts was, they've got the wrong Kai. <laughs> <laughs> hey, like after my fight, I was calling for the title shot and I think, sweet, I've got it. And then I heard they're bringing in a guy from Japan and his name's Kai. It's like, bro, he hasn't even fought yet. Mm. Yeah, I don't think he owns it. You, you got to at least show your worth or like do something. Um, and you know, for guys that have been grinding for years in the U UFC division, you know, fighting the best guys, um, we've proved that we belong here. So I don't know, that's just how I feel about it. It's, it's weird that you can come in off no fights in the UFC and, and get a title shot. Raul Rosas versus Mohamed Mokev grappling match potential. A grappling match between Raul Rosas Jr. and Mohamed Mokev could be a thrilling matchup the two young prospects have shown impressive skills on the ground, and a clash between them would be a must-see for fans of grappling. Max Holloway thinks Alex Pereira has Fighter of the Year award locked up. Max Holloway believes that Alex Pereira has already secured the Fighter of the Year award. The featherweight praised Pereira's impressive performances and consecutive title defenses. And you do that, and uh, you're going to be in running for Fighter of the Year this year. You and Alex Perheo wins over uh, Gaethje and uh, Ilya Taporia put you right at the top of the heap, I would think. I mean, I don't know, man. Uh, I don't know if they do that. <laughs> the way uh, uh, the way Alex took fight, I mean, the, fa he, the fastest guy to defend his title, right? With three title defenses, uh, that's a hard man to beat. I mean, every time uh, I'm in the talks for it, somebody's having a crazy ass year, and uh, I think Alex Perheo got, <laughs> got yeah. the win bag already. Jamal Hill claims he would beat Khalil Roundtree better than Alex Pereira. Jamal Hill is confident that he could have defeated Khalil Roundtree more convincingly than Alex Pereira. The light heavyweight contender believes that he's on a completely different level than Roundtree and would have dominated the fight. The way that Pereira beat, beat Khalil, for one, Pereira couldn't beat me fighting that way, and two, that's how I would have beat Khalil from the jump. He would have got beat like that even earlier in the fight. You know what I mean, like he would have like pieced up with hands. Like, come on, bro. That's what I do. If anybody, if anybody thinks that Khalil is on my level, let's see him go and win a fight. Cause he's not even we're we're not even in the same like bracket right now. He got a title shot just because he means a favorable matchup for the champ. You know what I'm saying? He's in he's number eight. He don't he, he was coming off a loss. I'm in the top five. He he's got to win. He's got to get a win before he gets up. You know I mean, before that even is even a thing. And if he does get a win, and that ever does materialize to be a thing, anybody who thinks he can beat me, bet your house on it. Real talk. I bet nobody gonna be nobody gonna bet nothing that they really want to lose on that. Nobody's taking that bet. Francis Ngannou breaks grip strength record. Francis Ngannou has showcased his incredible strength by breaking the grip strength test record. The former UFC heavyweight champion's score is significantly higher than any other fighters. Um, I was going to ask you, do you know what this is? The grip strength? Are you interested in doing some grip strength and seeing what it is? Yeah. So you pull it as hard as you can and it'll show the camera the number. It looks like you're pulling it pretty hard. Really? Yeah. Another number. Now you look at the number. 177. Oh. <laughs> That's the record. Jake Paul predicts Francis Ngannou finish over Renan Ferreira. Jake Paul is predicting a dominant victory for Francis Ngannou in his fight against Renan Ferreira. The YouTuber turned boxer believes that Ngannou will finish the fight and lift his PFL heavyweight title.
Francis Ngannou, the baddest man on the planet, is back against a backflipping six foot nine giant, Henning Ferreira. I got Francis by KO in under three rounds, but you never know, one punch and that could be it. Tune in live this Saturday, ESPN Plus pay-per-view and his own pay-per-view. It's the battle of the giants. Oh, and I'm commentating. Marab Valishvili reacts to Umar's fight booking. Marab Valishvili wasn't happy with Umar's decision to fight him in December. The bantamweight champion believes that he deserves more time after his recent victory and wants to return to the octagon when ready. He also mentioned potential opponents. It's a very interesting fight. Umar wanted to fight December and he was keep, keep talking trash in the internet. Like, bro, I just win the title fight. Like, when I guess he don't want to wait or something and they, they give him a, this fight uh, against Song Gidong. Now we will see who's going to fight for the belt. Either winner of this fight or winner Figu of Figueroa and Jan yeah. or maybe rematch against O'Malley. Let's see who will be ready for like March. So that's the desired date for you. March comeback would be ideal for you. Yeah, like usually every champion takes six months. First, for sure, I, I need six months. And after maybe I will I will keep it more short. I want to be busy. I want to be, but the, I just win the belt and I want to take my six months. Let me tell you this. Yeah. Um, I am I'm ready for fight. Whoever will be next. Whoever UFC will give me, I will fight. I don't, I don't care. I'm a champion now and I don't care. That's why I don't like, they have to call me out. I don't have to call them out. Of you course. Know? Francis Ngannou, I'm the king. Francis Ngannou is confident in his ability to defeat Renan Ferreira. The former heavyweight champion declared himself the king and predicted a dominant victory in their upcoming matchup. He got right in your face, right forehead to forehead. Did you expect that aggression from him? I expect everything from him. I think at this, uh, by this moment, we are ready for everything. And tomorrow is the time. And what's your prediction, my friend? How do you come out victorious? Well, I think there's one way to come out victorious is to beat him. And, and, and let him know who is the king. Excited to be back in mixed martial arts, my friend. Who is the king, Renan? Who is the king, Renan? Who's the king, Ohei? Problema. He knows the answer, no need to ask him. I'm the king, and tomorrow you're gonna find out. Good luck tomorrow night, guys. Hamzat Chimaev rolls with Olympic gold medalist in training. Hamzat Chimaev has showcased his elite grappling skills by training with Razembek Jamalov, a 2024 Olympic gold medalist. The footage of their training session has gone viral, further cementing Chimaev's reputation as one of the most dangerous fighters in the UFC. <laughs> Francis Ngannou, dismissive of body shot challenge. Francis Ngannou has brushed off a body shot challenge, claiming that his sister hits harder than the challenger. The former UFC heavyweight champion's response has sparked laughter and admiration for his incredible power and confidence. My sister is harder. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on. Turn it here, turn it here. Come on, man. It's messed up. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Dewey, can you give me some technique tips here? Yes, I need you to whip the hip. One motion. One motion can separate. Come on. <laughs> Did you just, you just act a little bit? You got to do that. <laughs> I'm gonna hurt my hand. It's belts it off. Okay. It's belts it off. I gotta give up. I gotta give up. Demetrius Johnson weighs in on UFC versus one championship trade. Demetrius Johnson has given his perspective on the trade deal that sent him to one championship and brought Ben Askren to the UFC. While he believes the UFC won financially, Johnson insists that one championship got the better fighter, citing his impressive record and the buzz he generated for the promotion. 
like just money wise i think the ufc won because of how much more money they were able to generate and quote unquote from dana white knows guys i wasn't making them any money but i think the sheer of the of just the fucking horse that one championship got i mean if i wanted to today i could still fight i don't think ben Askren could still fight i could still fight if i truly wanted to he can't and you look at the fights i was able to produce the knockouts the buzz that i was able to produce for one championship i mean it's easy clear that they got the better athlete the, the better fighter but when it comes down to the money aspect of it they probably won but it's what are you looking for are you looking to generate more money or are you looking to have the best athletes in the world you want to have the best athletes in the world they got my black ass <laughs> demetrius johnson turned down super fight with mikey Demetrius Johnson has revealed that he was offered a super fight with Mikey, but he declined the opportunity. Johnson explained that while he was intrigued by the idea of a grappling match, he couldn't come to terms and ultimately lost interest in the fight. Good. I mean, they, they offered me to do a super fight with Mikey Misumichi. They're like, hey, what do you think about doing a grappling match uh, with Mikey? And then we were going back and forth like with the price and we just couldn't come to terms. And then they're like, how about a super fight? with uh, Mikey Mitsumichi. We'll do one round grappling, one round mixed martial arts. And I was like, guys, I, tr I truly don't care about fighting. You know, I, I just had an offer, you know, I, I think it was maybe three weeks ago uh, for great money, phenomenal money. And I was like, I don't, I, I just don't care to fight. I truly don't care to fight mixed martial arts anymore. Demetrius Johnson knew he was done after third Adriano Moraes fight. Demetrius Johnson has admitted that he knew he was finished fighting in MMA after his third fight with Adriano Moraes. Despite winning the fight, Johnson felt a sense of closure and realized it was time to move on to the next chapter of his career. I, I, knew, I, I knew after I fought Adriano the third time, I knew I was done. I was like, this is wow, not boring, but I was like, okay, I just won again. What's next? Um, and then there was time like when Aljo, he he was a man. And I was like, God, he would be a great fight. I was like, nobody think like, at the time like nobody could beat Aljo. Like he was, you know, winning. And I was like, God, that'll be that fight intrigued me. I was like, man, it'll be nice to maybe fight him. Man, I grappled his ass. Woo! I'm glad I didn't fight him. Get his black ass on my back. I tell you what, that motherfucker's good. Shavkat Rachmonov open to Islam Mahachev super fight. Shavkat Rachmonov has expressed his willingness to fight Islam Mahachev if the UFC light heavyweight champion decides to move up to welterweight. Rachmonov is confident in his abilities and believes he can compete with the best fighters in the division. Если я как знаю, Билал и Ислам не хотят друг против друга драться, они сказали, что у них хорошие отношения. Mm -hmm. Если ты станешь чемпионом, ты готов будешь принять Ислама? Ну, Ислам, если сам захочет yeah. драться, почему нет? Я, у меня такого нет, там, чтобы Исламом хочу да, драться, да, там, да. его хочу выиграть. Но если сам Ислам захочет, там... Ну, мы, сам инициативу мы, ты не проявляешь. Ну, я не, не хотел бы, конечно. Да, как да, как я бы я так отношусь, как бы, всем хорошо, в принципе, так. Но если он, у него желание будет какого-то, там, mm -hmm. хочу поднять, Драться, я как бы не откажусь от этого. Чисто спортивный интерес будет, думаю. Такого ничего нет такого. Если он захочет, я там без проблем. Shavkat Rachmanov respects Bilal Muhammad. Shavkat Rachmanov has shown respect for his upcoming opponent, Bilal Muhammad. Rachmanov recognizes Muhammad's skills and expects a tough fight, but he remains determined to emerge victorious. Соперник очень хороший. А Bilal Muhammad, ему его нельзя недооценивать никогда. Он... Он очень хорошо, хорошо слушает, он всех как бы хорошая у него тактика. Я, я не думаю, что как бы у меня просто так будет. Но я, я дерусь до конца, просто еще сколько сил хватит, и там и, там и покажу свои навыки, думаю. Mm -hmm. Белал сам себя такой пахар, он постоянно пашет, постоянно как бы растет, в зале постоянно занимается, что-то что думает, что-то говорит и делает. Ну, молодец, удачи ему, когда мы встретимся, кто, кто-то из нас, кто сильный, пускай победит. Thanks for watching. Smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe.